Today I'll be sharing with you how I converted this scrapyard audio panel to a simple sequencer. This video is sponsored by Eisler. So recently I went to the Hackaday Supercon in California again. I had a ton of fun meeting the people and hacking the badge. Afterwards, as it seems to become a custom, we went to the Apex Surplus store again. It's a huge scrapyard and a warehouse full of old hardware, which is really cool for nerds like us. Already last year I spotted a box full of those audio panels. They seem to be parts of a super expensive audio console from the 90s. The super smooth encoders, the nice displays and buttons caught my attention immediately. However, I didn't have any space in my hand luggage left, so I didn't get one back then. And I tell you, I regretted the decision and this time I instantly went there, grabbed the panel and shoved it in my bag. For 40 bucks, this is a bargain. Jarun, aka Sprite TM, grabbed also one for his daughter as a toy. And since we had a spare day left, we just started reverse engineering it there. So you know, as a nerd, you go to the coffee and start reverse engineering old audio panels instead of going to the beach. We quickly identified how the displays are working. They are just like simple shift registers where you just shift in the columns. So it was quite easy to let it display anything. We certainly had a lot of fun there. The other boards of the panel, however, were a bigger puzzle with some custom ASICs, an FPGA and some bus system. That's a perfect puzzle for a genius like Sprite. While I was still traveling home, he actually reverse engineered everything, including writing a new driver for the FPGA from the 90s to drive the displays. To achieve this, he had to dig out a 20 years old toolchain from Xilinx to be able to program for this first generation FPGAs. That obviously made my life way easier. I just designed a PCB consisting of an ESP32S3 and some connectivity. It's plugged in in this bus interface. Unfortunately, most of the pins are needed for a bus, so 1 bit Sigma Delta audio must be sufficient for starters. I ordered a board at Eisler, which is today's sponsor. Eisler is my go-to PCB house when it needs to be quick. The Blitz service, which works with two-layered boards, allows me to design a board on stream and receive it within one week and assemble it on the next one. They are also listening to the community constantly improving their services. For example, the Blitz service now also allows elongated holes, which are necessary for USB ports. And the best addition is that they also support LCSC parts for their assembly now. That's perfect for a cheaper like me. I have to try the assembly soon again. This time I only need the boards and the stencil. If you try them out, use my discount code BOTLUNI to get some bucks off. The boards arrived and we were able to assemble them on screen. I didn't find the right USB ports but I could use the SMD one by just bending the pads. That went exceptionally smooth. This, this is for the woodworking community. Here we go. Okay. Magic smoke or not? To be honest, I expected some mess ups, but it actually worked first try. <gasps> what? <laughs> Right. 
Thank you very much for this coat. That's so cool. That's so... Oh, I, you people envious. 40 bucks for this thing. And I just needed to make a PCB. And now, <laughs> and now we can make a sink. All right, PCB worked. Next step was the audio. I wanted to use the Sigma Delta modulation. There is no DMA for that, unfortunately. So I initialized two channels for stereo and the timer function that updates the modulators with the next sample at the desired sampling rate. At the start, I just generate a sine wave at 440 Hz. I just feed the left channel for now. Testing it with the scope, you can actually see the modulated waveform and the frequency analysis shows the peak at 440 Hz. Awesome! My circuit does not have any amplification yet except for generating a 1 volt AC signal. But I have those crappy audio amplifiers and a small speaker that I can attach. That needs some power, so I need to add another power connector. Oh well, I only have up to 5 pin JSTs. We just skip a spare ground pin here. Okay, moment of truth. Nice, we got some sound. But I don't like all those jumper wires. So I swap the amp for a simpler version, make some JST connectors and solder them on. Magic smoke. It still works, nice. Okay. Now with the panel attached. Sweet. The next step was to add some sequencer features. Few lines of code and the current plate controller is indicated by an LED. But it still doesn't do anything. I played around a bit with the volume, pitch, and also encountered some funky bugs. This is, this is a bug. Hold your ears for that one. Easy fix and it finally works. I just need to display some notes. The little amp was quite noisy, so I made a simple line connector to attach it to my audio interface. And the camera. Enjoy! It plays some simple sine waves and samples, but nothing really fancy. Now I can add a proper wavetable, a synth and maybe make even a mod player. A few live streams later. The mod tracker isn't complete yet, but I'm really excited about it already. Audio is still a little bit noisy. And there are some filters and effects missing. I'm really happy how it turned out. I will still add some features and maybe a 3D printed case. Do you have any suggestions? Put them in the comments. And leave a sub if you like those quirky passion projects of mine. I thank you for watching. Thanks to Eisler for sponsoring this project. Big thanks to all my supporters. You are the best. And I see you next time. Bye.